Hey everybody, Dr. G here. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and body language expert, and today we're going to be analyzing Aaron Patterson. This is a relatively new case that you may not have heard about, so I'm going to give you a quick summary. Basically, in the state of Victoria, which is in the southeastern part of Australia, Aaron Patterson served lunch to four in-laws. Three of them died, and one of them is in critical condition. It's been reported that they were poisoned by death cap mushrooms that were served in the dish. Erin Patterson maintains her innocence and says that this was non-intentional. What's being reported is that police are currently looking into the matter. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at her body language, her statements, and her behavior. Before we get started, I wanted to remind you of a couple of things. One, these are just my opinions. This is my interpretation of her body language. This is not fact. It is just how I see it. In addition to that, obviously I've never analyzed her or met her this is not formal. This is not a psychological evaluation. I'm just commenting on my own observations. In addition, I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, let's go. During my last live event, I said I wanted to start doing more Australian cases, which is exactly why I'm taking this one on. All right, let's jump right in, and I'm going to provide some commentary about what I believe we're observing. It's a tragedy what's happened. Can you tell us about the meal that you cooked? I'm so devastated by what's happened, by the loss of Don. Don is still in hospital, the loss of... So obviously this is Erin Patterson. She is the person who served the dish to her in-laws, where three of them have died, one of them is still hanging on, but is in critical condition. What we're seeing right now is that she obviously appears distressed. She has her eyes closed at this moment. We oftentimes close our eyes when we're saying or thinking something that we don't like. Let's jump back and watch this again. I'm going to be providing more intensive commentary on some other parts, but let's just check this out. ...by what's happened, by the loss of Don and Don is still in hospital, the loss of Ian and Heather and Gail. They were some of the best people that I've ever met. Gail was like... Gail was the mum that I didn't have because my mum passed away four years ago. So obviously she's talking about something that's quite emotional. She's talking about having lost her own mother. She's also talking about how this person had served in that role since she was gone. So it's understandable that anybody that's experienced that would be quite upset, particularly if she's passed at this point. But I am going to point out a couple of things as we keep watching. And Gail's never been anything but good and kind to me. And so there's a couple of things that stand out as a little bit peculiar. Once again, the goal of this is not to determine whether or not she did this intentionally. I'm just trying to comment on what I'm observing. Some of it may seem a little peculiar. Some of it may seem very normal, and I'm wanting to help you better understand how I observe interviews like this. So one thing I'm observing is that she doesn't seem to have actual tears coming out. Now, she might. Maybe it's small. Maybe they're just trace amounts of tears. Uh, it's hard to say, but I don't visibly see any tears. That doesn't mean that someone's crying is fake. People can very much have shock or trauma and not produce tears. So it's a little bit unusual, but it's not impossible. But I do want to comment that I do notice that, and it is a little bit strange. She does this throughout. I'm going to be pointing that out a couple more times. Another thing that I noticed is what her statement just was. Well, let's go back and listen to it again, and I'm going to explain to you the what stands out about it. And Gail's never been anything but good and kind to me. So it's a little bit of a strange thing to say because it sounds like she's trying to, to tell people that there's no motive to have done this intentionally. Now, and maybe that is what she wants people to know. Maybe she wants people to know I would never have done this because she's only been good and kind to me. But it's a little bit of a strange thing to say in this context to me. Maybe Maybe other people disagree with that. But to me... For that to be one of the first things she says is she's never been anything but good and kind to me. To me, that sounds like she's trying to say, here's why I wouldn't have done this intentionally. L let's keep going. And Anne and Heather were some of the best people I've ever met. They never did anything wrong to me. And I'm so devastated about what's happened. So saying they never did anything wrong to me, that there's something about that that I think resonates with people is seeming a little bit strange. And personally, I do find it a little bit strange. Once again, that doesn't mean that she did it intentionally. Just because she's pointing out these people never did anything wrong to me 
doesn't mean that she tried to harm them or that she did harm them, but it's an odd thing to say. I mean, if you think about this context, you think about somebody who just lost three people in there and what you're telling reporters when they're asking about it is these people didn't do anything bad to me. I just think that that's sort of a peculiar thing to point out. Let's hear her say that again, and then we're going to keep going. <laughs> Good and kind to me. And Ian and Heather were some of the best people I've ever met. They never did anything wrong to me. I'm so devastated about what's happened. Can you? It's also it sort of stands out that she's looking at her hands. I don't know if she's looking to see if there's tears or what she's doing. And the loss to the community and to the families and to my own children who've lost their grandmother. Can, t can you tell us a bit more about the lunch? What I can tell you is that I just can't fathom what has happened. I just can't fathom what has happened. That Ian and Heather have lost their lives and Gail has lost her life and Donna's still in hospital and I pray. So one thing that's very interesting, and maybe this is advisable when you have accidentally poisoned somebody, she has not apologized for what she's done. It's interesting. She'll say, I'm so sorry, but she is not saying that she can't believe that she accidentally served people with poison mushrooms or whatever it is. There's a bit of a disconnect with the way that she's talking about it versus any acknowledgement, the role that she played in it. So I don't know if that's her psychologically distancing herself from it a bit. I don't know if her counsel would say, hey, don't in any way, shape, or form acknowledge that you actually serve this. What I, I don't know what the motivation would be, but I've noticed there really is no acknowledgement about the role that she's played in it in that sense. I pray that he pulls through because my children love him. And you must be pretty shaken up by this as well. I'm devastated. I love them. Now, one thing I wish I could explain better is why she's looking up in the sky. To be honest, this confuses me a little bit. I've sat for a bit trying to analyze what it is that she's doing. Because when you think about body language, the whole idea of body language is that we unconsciously do certain behaviors. And so I just don't know how to explain what she's trying to accomplish by doing this right here. And I can't believe that this has happened. And I'm so sorry that they have lost their lives. So that goes back to what I was speaking to earlier. I'm so sorry they have lost their lives, not I'm so sorry that I did something and people have gotten hurt. It's I'm sorry, so sorry they have lost their lives. Maybe it's a, a semantics. Maybe I'm just way overstating stating things. But that stands out to me a little bit. How are you I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Can you tell us where the mushrooms came from? So the intensity of crying very much could be real. Given the trauma that we're talking about, if you accidentally poison somebody, that is something that is incredibly difficult to figure out, to process, to figure out what to do with something like that. But on the other side, if for argument's sake, she just didn't want to answer these questions, people can use hysterical or intense crying as a way to distract. I can't say at all which way she's doing this, but it, there are multiple reasons people engage in this kind of behavior. So I just thought I'd point that out. Just got to believe it. Can you tell us where the mushrooms came from? So when we think about what the overall messages were that she provided, she didn't have to stop and talk to the press at all. She could have just ignored them and gone inside. But when we think about what did she accomplish by talking, she said, these people have been good to me. So I think she's basically saying I'd have no reason to hurt them. And I'm devastated by this. But she's not answering questions about where the mushrooms came from or anything like that. Police say you're a suspect. Do you have anything to say about yes, that? Yes, I say I didn't do anything. I love them, and I'm devastated that they're gone. And I hope, with every fibre of my being, that Don pulls through. That's Where what I have to say. Where did the mushrooms come from? 
Were they picked by you or where did they come from, Mary? What meal did you cook them? Did you eat the same meal? I mean, she does come across as very frustrated. I don't imagine that I would love journalists asking me these questions either, but it's interesting that she's refusing to acknowledge or to answer any of these questions, and maybe she's been instructed not to. I have no idea. It's possible that police or attorneys or whoever have said, don't say anything else, don't acknowledge anything about the mushrooms, don't answer questions about it. I don't know. But I'll be curious how this continues to develop. The goal today was just to talk about what I might be observing from her behavior, because I've read a few people that don't seem convinced about the genuineness of her reaction, particularly from the lack of tears. And while that is unusual, it's not impossible. Trauma and shock can do strange things to the mind and the body, so they don't always work in concert with each other after something like this. On the other hand, there were aspects of her, her behavior that were a little bit peculiar, that were a little bit odd. And we'll see as this story continues to unfold if there is more information that's worth looking at. I hope you've enjoyed this analysis. I know it was brief, but if there's other stories in the news right now that you want me to analyze or there's other stories from Australia or the UK or anywhere else in the world that you think would be interesting, please let me know. Before we finish up, I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right. Thanks for watching.